Here's, these are the rotten ones, but you see that lip. So we're just going to replicate that for the whole length. And then probably cut a foot off here, make a, a scarf joint to connect a new piece just to save the inside gunnel so it's a lot easier, less work. <laughs> Gunnels here. Yeah, and that's uh, just over a quarter and just under three quarters deep. So we could go, I don't know, I guess you could do a pass like that and then make two adjustments. Hmm. There's like three sixteenths left on the top. That's probably more a more important number here. Yeah. Uh, it's actually close, only, it's not even close. A little bit closer to quarter inch. You don't want to leave, put too little material. See, it's deceiving with the round over. Yeah. round cornered for the uh, replacement of the kind of rotted out parts there. You can see that here, around corners. So with, with the fence set up the way it is, we could pass that through one more time. Which one? Which, which side? Well, that one that needed some? Well, that side too.
too, but that's right, we forgot to do that before we changed the thing. Okay. That is next step. Remove the inside gunnels and seats and everything from the canoe. This is where we are replacing uh, the, the rotted out ends here. Just for a kind of a lap joint. And we're gonna do the same with that end over there. Uh, oh yeah, around there. It's actually better to do it this way maybe because the paint's <clears throat> all You definitely want to cut well inside. We can sand down to get it smooth. You mean on the outside? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like, leave it oversized to avoid that problem. It's kind of... Why don't we just use a set square for this? <clears throat> We're no longer relying on that line at all, mm -hmm. right? And well, this might take it off. I still want to be a little bit of an angle. So there's more wood at the bases, right? So it's still start and stop where it... Okay. Yeah, it doesn't work well on the varnish. You can still see it. Indelible pen. So that's a good shape, that's thicker at the base and thinner mm -hmm. out here, because that's where it matters. Hang on to it, just in case. Throw them in your car. Basically, we're all the same. Don't count them. Dripping, dripping. Alright. I'm going to put a little bit too much on. You don't really need that much. Have you tried this? Which one? No, oh, not. Oh, yeah, those ones. The muffin, yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. No, it's kind of dripping all over the place there. Uh -huh. It's fine. Do you have only like three seconds before you can do that? No, this will take hours. To... <laughs> <laughs> Not like the epoxy is mm -hmm. different. That's actually a really good fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it lined it lined up pretty pretty well. Mm -hmm. You want some of those small clamps? Just these two. Mm -hmm. And then, actually, want this one? Actually, I'll keep on the top as well. And you know what? Not like it makes a difference, but. Then we'll come back, stain it, or sand it, stain it, varnish it. Stand it, stain it, varnish. Okay. Let me get my finger out of the way. Okay. Whoop. You got enough mm. for touching, yeah? Mm hmm. Okay. There's Margarita Girl. Mm hmm. And. Yeah, that's where we'll cut. I think we did the other one first. <laughs> so all the new glue pieces are now in here. I'm going to copy the shape of this.
That should be solid enough. Ground for me. Watch the trigger. Oh. A little round over. This is the stern. Taking away some material. So they fit nice once they're propped up into the corner. You get yourself a little template. It's upside down. Stern. Bow. And trace them inside. And you cut your deck plates. Here we just scribe out our templates. And I'm just gonna choose to bandsaw this one out. Original deck plate there. My plans to make it just about an inch longer. So you can kind of see the scribe line there. Just jigsaw, router, sand, stain and varnish up next. Done. Cut out. And that fit, that will just get epoxied in the tip there. And that's not too bad. Deck plates. Uh, this is the rig I figured out <laughs> might be the best way to keep everything together. Clamp on the end, bungee cords to keep pressure forward. A couple clamps to keep it flush. And uh, another clamp here just to press the gunnels together to get that get rid of the gap in there. All I did was use some wood glue. Seems to work. Uh, I get the last one. I did the, the bow yesterday and it worked. It's a little uh, engraver, engraving I put in there. Let's see over here. So it came out all right. I uh, figure I'll, I think it's epoxy first and then an overall varnish afterwards. There's a little hole there. It's gonna just fill it in. But it's coming along pretty nicely. So this is step number, I guess one of coating. Two part epoxy with some of this silicate filler. We're mix it just a little bit for now and then we're gonna fill in the gaps with a little sandwich bag over there. Mix thoroughly. Um, you say North Brooks. Okay. <laughs> so I guess we're we're just gonna do one full. This is the bottom of the canoe, but 
especially with the new wood we put on, do a nice thin epoxy coat to waterproof. And then over the old uh, gunnel section here, which is kind of half rotten, just because it's just it's just got had some water exposure to it. You might as well do a thin coat just to help seal it. And do I'm gonna do all the the uh, thwarts and the handles ends to seal them because I don't think this ever had epoxy on it before. Otherwise it wouldn't be, I don't think it would have rotten this much. So we'll do the whole, not the whole canoe, but most of it. And then we're gonna come back with the thickened epoxy next. glue left over there but that's all right so from the last video I've sanded stained the outer outer gunwales uh, time to epoxy these now and do a second coat on the interior and the deck plates so I'm going to do that now. This is a 2 to 1, 2 to 1 ratio. So I figured the most important part is the inside uh, of the gunnel, just because no air gets at it, so you really want to make sure that's sealed, because in case any water gets in there, you really want to really want to make sure it's protected. So I'm doing it first. I'm really making. I'm putting kind of a lot of epoxy down. We can go over it. Go back over it in a few minutes just to even it out. It's starting to get hot in the pot. This stuff heats up when it gets when it gets close to curing. little brass to pin the inside gunnels first.
see the old one was there. These are just the pin, the gun, the gunnel. So we'll do the countersunk brass bolts. <laughs> Time filming. Yeah, it's filming. Ow. Bug bite. Mm -hmm. Already somehow. <laughs> Pure beeswax. Forgot to mention you got to coat the screw with it. Dig it in there. Help seal the hole and uh, keep moisture out. I'm gonna put a little bit on the hole here itself. It's kind of like natural Loctite. Mm -hmm. Oh, push the beeswax actually into the little gap here. Make a little bit of a seal somehow. Uh, so they're not completely countersunk, but I think that'll be enough. But the wood will press into it a certain amount. You mean it's just... I'll keep it a drill bit. Huh? It's gonna still be okay. What you walk down and show how it's, mm -hmm. how it's looking. Okay. Did you have one on that side too? The other uh, piece of this? Yeah, I think. But well, we need to put a screw in there. Let's just make sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. It's countersink that well. No, it's, I think it's uh, not pretty dull. Yeah, probably. That, might, that might be good enough. Try it and see. Completely wax it. Oh, you're not using the. Uh... We're just gonna start it. Not as countersunk as I'd like, but but once we get some more screws in, you can back it out and yeah. drip, pound it in a bit further. Okay, I can let go of this. And as you can see, there's one here, one there. So two long ones go directly into the deck plate, and then the outside gun will cap these two. So you can see you have enough wax when it... Oh, you're uh, still... Yeah, you're using yeah. that drill, right? Mm -hmm. It's not focusing.
Okay, so first light coat of epoxy on the frame of the inside gunnel. And now we add some of this stuff to do the, uh, I guess the filler, the gap filler. I don't even know how much to put in, but let's just try that much, see what happens. It's kind of clumpy though. Just turned super solid after ten, not even ten minutes. Is it hot still at the bottom? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just a little bit more, I think. So you want this to be fairly thick when you're filling up the gaps there. You definitely don't want to breathe this stuff in. Silica, that's like glass base, right? Okay, that's getting there. I think that'll be enough. So we're gonna stir this up and then add it to the bag. Put it in the bag, just work it around a bit more to get all that silicate powder smashed up. And then move it all into the corner. Cut a little slit into it. Okay, that'd be great. Battles are on. We're doing a little, another thick, uh, thick mixture with those uh, bubbles here. What are they called? Silica. Pretty thick consistency. I'm just gonna pack it into the the front end here. I really wanna. I just wanna make sure it's a really good seal. Okay. Use a bristled brush for this job. Just to get it right into that gap there. It's not the easiest thing to work with. to completely seal it off. All right, do the other side. Last step, and get the hardware fitted.
you already tighten that front one? No, not. Well, I'll do it right after. This is number six. Number five. Oh. Hmm. That's an unusual size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you could probably use longer ones. Because mm. especially up here. Mm. That's where most of the pulling is. Well, because this is keeping the screw back from... Mm. Is already screw the screw guitar, Huh? Oh no. Oh. Yeah, I think that's the one that's basically all epoxy. <laughs> I'm not going to try and turn it mm. anymore, not. it should be longer.